Welcome to Double Standards with me, Afshin Ritansi. NATO continues to sell its weapons to brutal Arab dictatorships, and mainstream media doesn't want you to know about it. This week, we look at the ongoing revolution against Saudi Anglo-American-backed Bahrain as it continues to kill, imprison, and torture its people. Coming up in the show, which Hollywood directors will get the top job at the British Broadcasting Corporation's inquiry into child abuse, we go to Athens to witness the warm welcome from Greek people for Germany's Chancellor. And as NATO-backed violence continues to prop up the Persian Gulf dictatorship of Bahrain, we talk to Saeed Shahabi of the Bahrain Freedom Movement. Did you see Thursday's vice presidential debate? U.S. incumbent Joe Biden thinks he can beat Paul Ryan with a new initiative now to destroy what's left of the American motor car industry. After SEAL Team 6 killed Osama bin Laden, Biden is now planning to dispatch them to destroy General Motors. Osama bin Laden is dead and General Motors is alive! Osama bin Laden is dead and General Motors is alive! Osama bin Laden is dead and General Motors is alive! The ruling UK Conservative Party have been having their annual conference this week. Prime Minister David Cameron wasn't too happy about the popularity of his rival Boris Johnson, the Mayor of London. This was Prime Minister Cameron arriving, as you can see, not many people showing much interest in him. And this was Mayor Johnson, who had a huge welcome at the conference. David Cameron wasn't happy about his popularity one bit. Desperate to keep him busy and away from the public so he doesn't become Prime Minister, he decided to give him a big job. So what was it? Here is Boris Johnson, Britain's new defence chief. Let's have a look at his first day on the job. What is this? This is it. We're watching the... This is it. Come on, whoever you are, doing whatever you're doing. Fantastic. How terrible that so soon after revelations about Britain's BBC being a shill for imperial war, it now turns out that for decades they have been covering up alleged rape and the sexual abuse of minors. Never fear, though, the new director general, George Entwistle, has announced two famous Hollywood directors will head up a wide-ranging investigation into what really happened. Why? I was just expressing a healthy sexual curiosity. I'm uh, sorry, uh, Raman. Serco, uh... the private company that runs Britain's prisons, schools, hospitals and nuclear missile systems, amongst other things, has again messed up the National Health Service. They were given one and a half billion dollars worth of government money to provide services to prestigious King's College and St. Thomas's hospitals. They're now involved in 70% of all UK patient diagnoses. Here they are in action, playing fast and loose with patient records. London's NHS hospitals have now been forced to lend the company even more money. So despite media here in Britain and in America trying to destroy Hugo Chavez of Venezuela, they failed again. Luckily, Chavez's comrades got their own back against CNN. Let's see what happened after Hugo Chavez's victory was announced by CNN's presenters. I think we know from this clip that the lighting technician is a Chavista. <laughs> and now, take a look at this. A record 47 million Americans are on food stamps. costing the U.S. federal government $75 billion per year. Is that money being spent wisely? A study estimates $2.1 billion in food stamp money is spent on sugary drinks each year. Kraft gets one-sixth of its revenue from food stamps. That's a huge subsidy. Maybe Congress can cut food stamp subsidies to big soda, big candy, and big food when it reapproves the farm bill. Well, it's 11 years to the day that Kabul came under aerial attack from U.S. forces. Who else could we interview but America's top general, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Martin Dempsey? Welcome, General Dempsey, to Double Standards. Firstly, more U.S. troops are killing themselves than dying in combat. Is it true you and your Joint Chiefs want Commander-in-Chief Obama to book you all into suicide clinics in Switzerland? 
That's not my call to make. Uh, my job is to provide options on behalf of the Joint Chiefs and the combatant commander to the commander in chief. You're giving uh, them options for how to kill themselves. Anyway, President Obama has also been waging a great war against America's poor, but some are rebelling. Are you ready to militarily attack the people of the Gulf of Mexico just because they're poor? Are you afraid of them? You know, I've got, uh, we've got uh, forces postured in the Gulf for any number of reasons, but uh, there are no, our, I would describe our current stance in the Gulf as defensive and deterrent in nature. I know that you love the British royal family. You recently met the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge when they visited Pacific Islands once used for nuclear testing. How did the whole photo scandal resonate with you? You liked the pictures? It was this competing emotions. It was, it was incredibly uplifting to see them together, sharing their experiences and, and supporting each other. And it's just tragic to see the, what, uh, what they've gone through at such a very early age. You said you let President Obama down after your men were involved with trafficked sex workers in Colombia earlier in the year. How much of a sacrifice is it for your troops to have to sleep with indentured sex workers when they should be guarding your commander in chief? You know, some of us recall those sacrifices every day, but the nation on this day as a body should remember their sacrifices. Thank you, General Dempsey, the most senior soldier in the U.S. Army and who is a senior officer during all that torture in Iraq's Abu Ghraib prison. Thank you once again. Thank you. Here I am at the world-famous Tate Modern Gallery in London, famous for its collection of Rothko paintings. Mark Rothko, an abstract expressionist who killed himself when he realized that uh, his work was being funded by the CIA. Quite a lot of abstract expressionists kill themselves too when they all realize that the American government was actually funding their work. We're going to take a look now at one of the most famous of Mark Rothko's works, the one for the Four Seasons Hotel in New York, where uh, rich diners uh, didn't really take to it and it had to be taken down. Let's have a look. They've defaced the world famous Rothko painting. What's going on around here? Anyway, it's still worth more than the entire Greek economy. I'm off to Greece. Well, here I am in beautiful Athens in sunny Greece, overlooking the welcoming party for the German Chancellor. She's coming to Greece to tell the country what to do. Not too sure it's very safe here. Uh, what with the austerity cuts? What's going on here? Adolf Hitler is Germany's Chancellor? No wonder the Greeks don't like the austerity deal. Greece is just getting too weird. It feels like I'm going back in time. What's happening to Europe? What on earth is that? I'm being told by the IMF and ECB that it's a Trojan horse they've sent from Washington and Brussels. Doesn't look like the Greek people like it much, though. Trust the Greeks to know not to make the mistake of Trojans. So the Arab Spring goes on, the awakening of revolutions in Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, not being reported by mainstream corporate media, all implicitly supporting NATO's Arab dictators as the killing, imprisonment and torture continue in Manama and Katif. Let's have a look at the dictatorship of Jordan. This video purportedly shows Jordanian police in action as a man is beaten by officers backed by the West. In the past few weeks, Human Rights Watch reports that Jordan's government is violating the right to freedom of association by effectively shutting down a Jordanian legal assistance group called Tamkeen, which gives free legal advice to migrant workers. Meanwhile, there are continued reports of the use of torture in Jordan's prisons. Basically, officials are not being investigated, prosecuted, called to account when acts of torture uh, do occur. And we're asking the United States, because of its very large aid package to Jordan, to make some of that aid conditional. Conditional? I thought U.S. aid was conditional on torture being mandatory. So what did America's best-loved liberal satirist John Stewart of The Daily Show ask the king or dictator of Jordan? about torture when he was on his show. We're talking with King Abdullah II of, of Jordan. Let's talk very briefly about uh, Iran. They seem to be, uh, in that part of the world, the real elephant in the room that everybody, even the supposed allies, are very wary of right now. Would you say, and maybe you can't say, uh, are they uh, the biggest problem in the world? And 
Uh, look, I mean, obviously, the, the, the issue is, is um, on everybody's mind is their nuclear program. More concerned about Iran's nuclear program than asking him questions about the torture in his own country, Mr. Stewart. You're not interested in what Human Rights Watch have to say? Joining me now to go through some of the cartoons from around the world is comedian David Mulholland. David, welcome to the show again. How have you been? Well, I have been good. I've been good. How are you, Afshin? Yeah, pretty good. I should uh, add, though, that uh, very importantly, it is International Top Spinning Day worldwide. Spinning Top and Yo-Yo Museum urging everyone to get out their yo-yos and spinning contraptions. So have you been spinning today? Uh, there's a lot of spinning going on down there, down in Parliament, I think. Um, your first cartoon. Uh, first cartoon is by uh, Latouf, who is a wonderful French uh, cartoonist. Um, and it's basically Bradley Manning being locked up in the American flag. Uh, he's, he's scheduled to go to court finally in February, I think February 4th uh, next year. And by that time, he'll have been in prison for the better part of three years. And so his lawyers are trying to get him out saying, look, this is, this is against the U.S. military code and they're trying to pop him out of prison. And uh, there, there's, there is some good news on this, is that the uh, U.S. House of Representatives have recently passed uh, a bill that will uh, protect whistleblowers, or it's called the Whistleblower Enha uh, Protection Enhancement Act. Uh, Obama really doesn't like whistleblowers. He's prosecuted <clears throat> more than George W. Bush any. Um, yeah, this one, this one is, and this one says, uh, uh, September 2012, U.N. General Assembly, uh, PowerPoint presentation, and it's the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And, and I think it is kind of funny because I've always found the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse rather silly because you have conquest, war. Well, doesn't conquest happen after war? Okay, so you have conquest, war, famine, and death. Well, hey, once death happens, pretty much hunger, famine isn't really that important. No one's really sitting there going, not only am I dead, I'm also hungry. And being dead, I can't pop out for a kebab. Or, oh yeah, that's maybe what killed me. Can I just give my okay, four? Okay, give your four. Uh, NATO, capitalism, the United States. In fact, let's get our As uh, I said, viewers. ideology. You see, ideology is destroying the world. Let's get our viewers to nominate their four horsemen. Okay. Anyway, yesterday but was... I'm right. Okay, I, the Nobel Peace Prize was nominated. Yeah. Did, did you expect that? I thought it was a very odd nomination myself. But anyway, take well, us through se this. Several different... What does uh, it say? Uh, well, it's, it, you have two kings saying... I know, you nominate me for a Nobel Prize and I'll nominate you. Uh, now, I didn't think the nominations in, in uh, science or economics were surprising. Uh, the Peace Prize, but I mean, come on, the Peace Prize. Obama got the Peace Prize I, look, for killing the, and massacring look, people every day. No, uh, the Peace Prize I've found laughable for a long time. Most Peace Prizes are awarded to people who've been fighting and stopped fighting. An interesting thing's been happening uh, regarding Rwanda because the United mm. States has always supported Kagame. Well, not as much as the UK has. Britain loves them. Take us yeah. through it before we talk about it. Here you, and this one is out of uh, out of Kenya, uh, and uh, you have the UN report on Rwanda, uh, with the EU saying, uh, after going through this report prepared by our panel of expert, we've decided to suspend aid to Rwanda. And the panel of expert uh, is a monkey, a clown, uh, an insect of some sort. Uh, Pinocchio and an eagle. It's the crazy baroness, in fact, the EU foreign uh, person. EU. It's about China, and China are starting to get closer and closer in with the Kagage, Kagame government. No doubt about it. European Union, not happy. You're going down to the Soho uh, Comedy Club for your comedy evening. I am indeed. Optimistic comedy from David Mulholland. Thank you very much. Thank you. Arbitrary arrest and violence against civilians continue in the NATO-backed Persian Gulf dictatorship of Bahrain. I spoke to Saeed Shahabi of the Bahrain Freedom Movement about the situation there. He's accused by Bahrain of being a terrorist and his home has been attacked by arsonists. Welcome, Saeed Shahabi of the Bahrain Freedom Movement. Bahrain, not a story that you hear much about in the corporate news. It's all Syria, Syria, Syria. Tell us, uh, firstly, what you're hearing on the ground in Bahrain. Thank you very much. I, uh, it is true that it's only few stations and channels who are uh, who, who are after reality and after truth. Uh, unfortunately, many have been commercialized, have been politicized, and profession is not really the main concern of these channels. However, 
the situation behind I think, and I will challenge anybody in this world to, to say I am wrong, is the only r real, true revolution that is still there. It has started, it started last year, and it's continued uh, unabated without a single day passing, without at least 30 to 40 demonstrations countrywide. So if this is not a revolution, if this is not a movement for change, what is? Is it only do you get only mentioned when you become violent, when you become terrorist, when you become, uh, when you destabilize the whole region, or uh, are you considered also uh, a revolutionary when you call for change towards the better? I think in a country where you have a hereditary dictatorship controlling the whole affairs of the country, then I think if you really continue supporting that uh, regime, I think you have to question your credentials as a pro-democracy uh, person or as a lover of human rights. But what is the Bahrain freedom movement that you talk of, pro-democracy and so forth? Uh, the Bahraini government, big allies of Britain, say you're a, you're a terrorist. Unfortunately, in today's world, uh, terrorism and peace are relative terms. Uh, yesterday's uh, terrorist, if he grabs power in Libya, he becomes uh, a friend. Uh, at the same time, somebody who, who wants to change the situation in their country, if they do not fall within the line of the uh, Anglo-American uh, alliance, then you are considered an outcast and possibly termed a terrorist. What about this Interpol arrest warrant that the Bahraini dictators said you had against you? I'm not revealing any secret if I told you that I personally with other group were arrested one day 20 years ago uh, under the anti-terrorism uh, act I'm talking right. about uh, in UK uh, of course they realize that we are we have never been Bahrain is a, so why were you, why were you arrested uh, here all that time ago was it because uh, the Bahraini authorities were giving information to uh, we realized here in Britain? we only realized that our uh, interior minister had been here with uh, Colonel uh, Ian Henderson on the 18th of May, 1990. Uh, and we were arrested on the 22nd of May, four days later. Well, it could have be just been a coincidence, but we know that we did not commit any offense. The Queen of Britain recently intervened uh, here, uh, so we hear, about deporting uh, uh, Muslims for torture in America. The Queen's a good friend of uh, the person you don't like. Do you think uh, she's going to try and get rid of you? Well, I, I don't think uh, Her Majesty the Queen was going to do that. Uh, but I believe that the uh, British government ought to really uh, behave in a slightly different way, especially when it comes to issues of democracy and the human rights. To go and to, rec to receive, I mean, the thing that I would object to, and I don't think it is uh, the Queen who has instigated it, but it is the Foreign Office, to go and receive a sadistic uh, torturer on the Queen's Jubilee is just simply morally and ethically wrong. Uh, the son of the of our dictator, of Bahrain's dictator, should not have been invited, should not have been allowed to come to sit foot in the UK because he is simply a torturer. And are you not frightened that uh, the British government could make a deal and send you over? Well, I am I supposed to be a UK citizen. I cannot just be sent over to, to anybody. For what? For doing well, what? We've seen British citizens being deported for all sorts of other reasons too allies of uh, Britain for well, incarceration. I, I hope that the rule of law will prevail in this country, and it, is, it has been generally the situation. And the hope is that they will take action against torturers and not really take action against people like uh, two, two people who occupied the, um, the embassy, who, who went to the top of the embassy, of Bahrain embassy, who were, who were put to trial uh, recently. Uh, and I, I hope that they will really go after the real uh, problem makers, the real uh, criminals, those who kill, who, who maim, who torture, who shoot people, who use canister, uh, gas canisters, chemical gases, uh, uh, directly in the houses of people who are asleep, who killed more than 50 people because of inhalation of excessive uh, chemical gases uh, f fired by the people who were supposed to have been trained by jo pe people like John Yates and those who are the still... 
Metropolitan the, Police. The, metro, the former Metropolitan Deputy Commissioner. And also, of course, the uh, ancient uh, Colonel Ian Henderson, who still enjoys life in Bahrain. I think these are the people who need to be investigated. Why did you kill people? Why did you torture? Why did you steal? Why did you of hit course, people? Uh, the United States has its big fifth fleet. Uh, base headquarters there, Britain's big ally, that big base. I'm hearing some optimistic signs, I don't know whether they're true, that the United States is getting a bit tired of the Bahraini regime. Are you hearing anything about the idea they may move it to Africa? I, I don't think the United States is really serious about its commitment to human rights. I was also dismayed by President Obama's uh, address recently to the United Nations uh, General Assembly. When he mentioned the Arab Spring and he mentioned uh, all the revolutions except the one in Bahrain. Thank you, Saeed Shahabi, for coming on Double Standards. Thank you. Now it's time for People of Britain. Let's go to our roaming reporter. Time for our special section, People of Britain. Over to you, Leicester Square. Hello, Afshin. Yes, I've, I've just got a part-time job at the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation. First task, apparently, big task, secret documents in this case about child abuse or something need to be disposed of. Um, anyway, I'm going to do that when I get back from People of Britain. <laughs> Lady Gaga and WikiLeaks's Julian Assange are making a record together. Will you be listening? <laughs> no. <laughs> no interest? No. <laughs> Lady Gaga and Julian Assange are making a record together. What do you think of uh, how it's going to sound? Uh, you know, um, I don't like Lady Gaga. I think it's going to be a big hit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Even though the Americans are trying to kill him? What? Julian Assange, yeah. not Lady Gaga. She's a woman, I think. The King of Bahrain is thinking of training uh, Formula One uh, drivers for tanks and run the race in Syria. A good idea? Good idea. Yes, you, definitely. You think? <laughs> Lady Gaga and WikiLeaks are doing a uh, song together. Do you think it's a good <laughs> song? Julian Assange and Lady Gaga? It's youthful, yeah. It, it has a social commentary that's useful for the youth. Were you surprised by all the BBC allegations about uh, Cliff Richard and, um, and Jeremy Clarkson and child abuse? Well, I'm not surprised, but I, I can't say they committed the offence or not. If they did, they paid the price. If they didn't, well, let them free. But you don't think the BBC should have protected Cliff Richard? Yeah, sure, they should have. Child sex allegations involving Cliff Richard and Tom Cruise and uh, Prince Harry. Uh, were you surprised? I'm surprised. Because I don't think about this. I never know this movie, but I know Tom Cruise, of course, but I'm not sure about this. Should the BBC have been covering it up? Yeah, they have to. I think it's they have to cover it up, you know. Hit. The King of Bahrain <laughs> yeah. is so thinking of training uh, to to kill him. Formula One drivers what? to race tanks in, in Syria. Is not that Lady Gaga. She's a woman. I don't think so. I think. No? No, I don't think so. He's not good at all. Yeah. Why? It's problems in Syria, you know that. So if you want to make more problems, it's going to be more problems, you know. So I think it's. Not, not now, maybe in the future. Um, WikiLeaks is Julian Assange and uh, Lady Gaga. Uh, I think you're making a record together. Will you be buying it? Will you be buying the record? Oh, it sounds like the collaboration with uh, Lady Gaga and Slavoj Žižek. So it's kind of like radical political figure meets popular culture. Why not? Will you listen to the record? Yes. Sure, suddenly. You like Lady Gaga? Yes, Lady Gaga. You know, she, uh, she presented her performance in Hong Kong. <laughs> yes. With Julian Assange? Uh, yes. The BBC, lots of sex allegations about uh, Prince Harry, Jimmy Savile, Tom Cruise, Cliff Richard. Were you shocked that the BBC was covering it all up? Yes, I do. Uh, I think uh, they, they shouldn't uh, go on these details and so on. They, they should go to our more legitimate uh, stories and so on. But why would the BBC, why would they cover it up? I think they need to cover it up for a reason. They are looking for more pe more audience or so. A BBC mm -hmm. presenter, Jeremy Clarkson, child abuse allegations. Were you shocked? Sure. Yes. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yeah, we are come, all coming from Hong Kong. This is our Hong Kong team. Yeah! Thank you very much. Yeah! 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 Thanks a lot. Huh? People of Britain, obviously. <laughs> no problem here I work for the BBC security there you have it the people of Britain anyway I think the new jobs are being a very odd at the moment but anyway back to you in the studio
Lester, are you all right? Are those security guards? Looks like we've lost him. Well, we hope Lester is all right and we can hear more from the people of Britain next week. Lester, if you can still hear me, don't destroy those top secret BBC documents. Bring them to Double Standards next week. We can expose the cover-up. Anyway, you can email us at comment at doublestandardstv.com. See you next week.